I'm very emotional about this. I explained to him that something very terrible had happened, that um, the World Trade Center, which he knows very well, because he used to call it Mama's Building. I told him that it had, had been hit by an airplane um, and had now been destroyed and it doesn't exist anymore. He's, I think, concerned because he sees how sad I am. He kind of sees the, the sadness. He sees the sadness in me and he's, I think he's a little concerned about that. I asked a policeman outside school, what can I do? I want to do something, I want to help. And he said, give blood. So I'm going to go over to maybe St. Vincent's and see if I could do anything. And indeed, there were many people going to many hospitals in Manhattan offering to give blood. Melissa, you you live here, you cover this city, you've seen all kinds of things in New York. How, how would you describe the way New Yorkers coped with this today? I don't think, I mean, clearly no one's seen anything like it, and it was a mix of things. You did see a lot of people who were drawn down as spectators, people with cameras, uh, there was the little moment of a Salvation Army team that was setting out trays of milk and cookies, but at the same time, horror on the faces of New Yorkers as they clustered around radios, cars had their radios cranked, people just devastated by what had happened here today. Thank you. NPR's Melissa Block. NPR's Peter Kenyon joins us now. Let's go back to the morning crash at the Pentagon, Peter. Well, law enforcement, no officials say it was American Airlines Flight 77 en route from Dulles Airport in Virginia to Los Angeles that suddenly veered off course and smashed into the Pentagon. Uh, it ripped open a hole in the side of three of the five rings that you can see above ground on the Pentagon. Uh, military officials said the fire was intense, the heat was blistering. Uh, at least 40 victims reported in local hospitals, seven in critical conditions at a burn facility. Uh, hard to get to the site because of the smoke and the fire. Um, one victim uh, from the plane has already been identified now. Uh, Barbara Olson, the wife of U.S. Solicitor General Theodore Olson, was aboard that flight. Uh, law enforcement officials uh, told the Associated Press Mrs. Olson called her husband from the plane and described the hijacking, uh, saying that the hijackers were using knife-like instruments. Um, Theodore Olson also confirmed that his wife was on board, uh, saying he wished it wasn't so. Now, to be clear about this, we had two planes hijacked that crashed into the Twin Towers in New York, and this would have been a hijacked aircraft also. That's right. This one took off from uh, Dulles Airport outside of Washington en route to Los Angeles and just immediately veered off and hit the Pentagon. Especially shocking, this sort of attack on the Pentagon, the, the center of the military, and the attack really on the nation's It was, Noah, and there was no rapid evacuation, and the confusion around uh, the city today uh, was very telling. Uh, tourists were being yelled at by agitated Secret Service agents. Um, and it's kind of recognizing that confusion and how bad that might seem. Uh, the House and Senate leaders quickly gathered to say, we're going to reopen the Capitol as soon as possible. President Bush, who had been traveling in Louisiana and Nebraska, decided to come back to Washington, where he's expected to address the nation tonight. And um, the military remains on high alert status. Uh, military vehicles have been seen uh, on the streets of Washington, D.C., um, we're not expecting a lot of details from President Bush on how the government will respond to this attack, but clearly there are expectations of something significant. I might mention in, in Israel today, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon called it a turning point in the war against international terror. Let's add a bit here about the fourth hijacked plane of the day. It crashed outside Pittsburgh. Uh, Virginia Congressman James Moran, he's a Democrat whose district rep uh, includes the Pentagon, uh, he was briefed by a military official today, and after the briefing, he said that he thought that that target was Camp David. The crash actually occurred about 85 miles northwest of Camp David. Uh, uh, but there were, as you mentioned, 45 people on board, no expected survivors, uh, and that was that crashed in a remote field in uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Peter. NPR's Peter King. For the first time ever, all U.S. air traffic was shut down today. The planes involved in the four deadly crashes were hijacked from airports in Newark, Washington, and Boston. It's not yet clear how airport security in those cities was breached so dramatically, but the hijackings mean routine security procedures from x-ray machines to employee background screening will be scrutinized for vulnerabilities. And there may be limits to how much protection can be tightened. NPR's Emily Harris joins us now. Emily, first of all, do we know anything about how these teams managed to hijack the planes? No real details yet, Linda. Um, there's a lot of security measures in place at airports, um, but clearly the events today have proven that 
what we have now are breachable. Um, the security measures go from everything to the questions you answer when you check in to the cockpit door, which is supposed to be locked, to background checks of, of employees, metal detectors, all that sort of sort of uh, stuff. What's definitely going to happen here is a stepped up look at security measures. Um, although some people say, look, this isn't as much airport security as national security. Where was the intelligence that this was being planned? How hard would it be to uh, to get if it was in fact not if knives were used to hijack these planes? How hard would that be to uh, to get knives into an airplane? Well, you do have metal detectors, obviously, that you go through, but there have been situations um, where those have been tested and breached. Their one real issue is um, the people who, who stand there, the scanners they're called, have an incredibly high turnover rate. They uh, turn over at a rate of 100% a year nationally. So there's a lot um, more issues going on than do the x-ray machines work, for example. These, uh, th whoever took these planes controlled them over long distances and flew them into specific targets, appeared to be pilots. Yeah, it's clear to most security experts I've talked to that the, the people who did these attacks planned them were flying the planes. These planes are commercially available widely. It wouldn't be hard necessarily to get your hands on one and learn how to do it. NBR's Emily Harris. We'll continue covering the story of today's terrorist attacks in New York at the Pentagon and the crash near Pittsburgh in just a minute. And all things considered from NPR News.